Um, we have said the holy faults. How do we say the holy faults? When you open, first of all, we went to file. We click on new to give us a new file. After new, we went to projects. Under project, we click on defaults. Default has three tabs. This, on the ID tabs, we are able to put in gauge all the tab, all the names that we want, want our, our elements to, to carry. Okay, the ring gauge will answer gauge, the subcatment should answer S, the, the junction should answer J, the out for should answer out, and everything. After that, we went to the subcatchments and then we impute the default parameter. What area of catchment are we designing? What is the width? Then while the width in, in the width in, 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 a, in stormwater design, the width must not be more than 150 mm. In other words, water, we don't expect water to come from a distance greater than 150 mm into the drain. I will explain that one later. But that's the boundary condition. Then the node and the links, we also set them, okay, by telling him that the maximum depth of the node must not be more than four feet. So even if I didn't input the value for the node, I, the, the default value will be four feet. So even this four feet doesn't make any difference because at the end of the day, you have to click every element and then change your variables and put them what they should be. But why we set default is that for adventure you omit or you forgot, what does the computer use as a baseline? So that's why in some software, when you are using a system, a software you're using always, whether Microsoft Word, you go and set your font size to be 12. So that anytime you open the software, the font size will automatically be on 12, on 12. You can set this font type to be on Times Roman. Okay? Why? Because so that even if you are, you, you, anytime you just open and start typing, you are typing on font Roman. So that's what default does. So we have set the default and now we are good to go. So what do I do? I'll go to subcatchment. I'll draw the three subcatchment first. I'll go to subcatchment. I'll click on this subcatchment. Subcatchment. I'll draw a rectangle. I'll draw, I'll click first, move my cursor this way. I'll click and then go down. I'll click, I'll go left. I'll click, I'll go up. As I'm going up, I'll now right click. It will close. So you see, I'm not going to click this black arrow to the select. So you see, it has created a subcatchment and it, it named it S1. Why? Because we, we act we, under the default, under map window. Remember when we went to tools, map window, we we're able to set the load size to six. If I increase it to eight, it will be bigger. And you see, it's not bigger. Okay. If I go to map tools now, go to map display option. And under annotation, I say it should not display all these things. It will not display any of them. So it was because I went here and I asked him to display the link ID or the node ID. That was why he's displaying them. So I finished drawing this one. So please quickly, can you draw? Can you draw? Click on this and draw this. I'll, I'm drawing the second one now. The second one I'll, I'll draw here. I'll click here. I will draw here. I will click here. As I am going up, I will right click. Somebody asks, how do I delete? If you want to delete, you click on this black arrow. This black arrow is so important. This black arrow is like select two. So this catman two that I've created now, if I want to delete it now, what I'll do is I'll go and click on this black arrow. And then I'll click on this. I'll cl press delete. I'll confirm it. Enter. It will delete it. Oh, permission to record. Okay. Okay, Hamid, okay, I'll give you permission. But meanwhile, I'm already recording everything. And our last tutorial is already on YouTube. Let me, let me give, okay, let me pause. Let me pause the recording. So you can see, I've created this catchment. So to create a second catchment, um, I'll quickly go to the sub catchment and I'll draw again. Now, let me draw a funny one. Let's say my, my subcatchment look this way. The most important thing is that somehow I'll end it. And at end, I'll click, I click. So this is my S2. My S3 is this one. So let me delete this one. I'll click on this black arrow. I'll click at the center to highlight it. And I'll click delete. Okay. Because uh, let it be regular so that. Uh -uh. 
catchment four. Why? Because it assumes that I have catchment three somewhere. So I'll click delete. I'll delete it if I want to. But if, I, if I want, I can double click on it. I'll go here and change it to S2. S2. If I didn't want to, to I'll just go and, I can name it anything. I can even come here and name it Agege. That, that means that's Agege. That's the, all the flow. That means I want to model Agege. I can double click on this one and name it Lakey. Hmm? So let me just name it S1, S2, Agege. S2 Agege. Let it represent Agege. Agege area or street name. It could be street name also. So I'll go here and click again, and then click catchment three. Remember, these are just regular catchment, but in real life, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake midway. So before I drop, I just press escape so I can start again. If you follow the tutorial judiciously, You can do it if you follow the tutorial. Okay, so I have dropped. So if I make if I made a mistake, I'll go here. Let's say J1, and there's a mistake. I'll just click on it, and then place it well. Once again, I went to junction, and I click on it, and I started placing J1, J2, J3, J4. So all the water from this catchment will empty into here. All the water from this catchment will empty into here. All the water from this catchment will empty into here. And so on and so forth. So the last thing I have to do on page 10 of your manual is to go and pick the outfall. This is outfall, which is where the water will exit the total catchment or the total area or the city, or the water will flow into the river or into the lagoon or, or into the sewer overflow, into a retaining pond. You know, you can, you can some city they will build a retaining pond, okay, before the water goes into the stream. So, so this is it. So I don't know how many people have done it. So can you quickly go to your junction, click on junction, and then add here, add here, add here. If I make any mistake, made, if I have made any mistake, I just come and double click there on this junction, and the property of the junction will come out. So I can come here and, and name it and name it junction for manhole. If I'm working with the layman. Okay. We can change all the parameters. These are the SY coordinates, and then the elevation is not yet there. We put the elevation, we put everything, and then you model it. It will look exactly the way it will look in real life. So we're going to start start drawing the pipes now, and that is page eleven. Page eleven. So I'll click on pipe. I don't know how many of have placed it. If you have placed your four, if you make if you make mistake, just click on the select two. This is select two. This black one is select two. Click on it and then press delete. Or I click on it. If I want to delete this guy, I can also right click on it and I'll press delete. It will ask me to confirm. If I confirm now, it, it is gone. So I don't want to delete it. So the next thing I'm going to start putting my conduit or pipe. So I'll go here, I'll click on this, add a conduit. Look like a, like a pipe. Add a conduit. I'll click on it. Then I will click on this place. I'll go down. I'll click here. I'll click on this one. I'll go down. I'll click here. I'll click on this one, J3. I'll go down. I'll come add it here. Finally, I'll click on this one. I'll go down and I'll add it here. So can we quickly do that?
I'm waiting. Please, if you're done, just say yes. Just type continue or say yes. Okay, I believe we've all done that. So let's continue. So now we've drawn our catchment, we've drawn our manhole, we've drawn our conduit. So um, next, we are going to start um, putting the properties. So what we're going to do now is to, um, to finish up everything we need to draw. We're going to introduce the rain gauge. So in, now is this like a city or a district they want to design? For the storm water, we need to introduce the rain gauge. So I'll go here, I'll click on this rain gauge. No, I'm not introduced like um, 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 rain gauge, okay, basically. So I'll click on rain gauge. And I'll click here. So this becomes so the, 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 the whole object is complete now. There's no other, there's no nothing to draw. All I need to do now is now to start to connect them, to model them. Now I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to tell, I'm going to, I'm going to click this shortcut first. This select to, to, to the select. I'm going to ask the computer now to all the water coming from this catchment should empty into this manhole. All the water coming from this catchment should empty into this manhole. And all the water coming from this catchment. To empty into this manhole. Are you with me? Okay. So, how do we do that? So, how do we do that? To do that, I'll go to this place. Eh? I will double click on this catchment one. Watch me. That's one. Then, um, on that outlet, I'll open it. And I'll look at the closest outlet there. And that is J3. I'll type in J3. Watch what will happen now. You know, there's no connection between S1 and 3. But once I type outlet J3, and I press enter, it will draw a line and connect it to J3. The next thing is that you also have to ask this catchment that this S1 catchment should use my ring gauge. This ring gauge that I set up, ring gauge one. I will ask it to use ring gauge one. So I'll go to under ring gauge again, I'll, I'll click it, and I'll open this fly out. You see ring gauge one. Because that's the only engage I have now. I'll click on it. So I have defined now the, the area and the parameter of this catchment. I can leave it the way it is by default. Okay. I'll leave the area the way it is. Four. We're already on page 14 now. So these are the two things you change for all of them. You all, all the catchments, you click on them and tell them where to empty. So for this one, I say empty here. So ideally, just the one closest to it that you ask him to empty. So for this case, uh, catchment two, I ask him to empty inside J1. So when I double click on it, under ring gauge, I'm using the same ring gauge, but under outlet, I'll say J1. Enter to draw a line to J1. This one is going to empty into J into J J3. So I'll double click on it. Under outlet, I'll say J2. And under ring gauge, I'll ask it to use this ring gauge that I've created. So these are the only two parameters to change for the catchment. You can as well change other parameters, but I've already said them, that all of them are for four hectares. Use, Gariki, Maitama, all of them are for four hectares. Or Leki, uh, Aja, and uh, which other one? Ikoi, 
I've said, I'll just put in the apartment. So I mean, this one is 20 hectares. I'll just come here and change it. But remember, the bigger, the bigger the contribution to runoff. And just what the whole thing is. Are we together? So can we quickly put, click on this, any of this subcatchment, and then put in the parameters. But for now, only change because we have already set the other parameters by default. Okay, because I've already set the other parameters by default. So all we need to do now is to set up, um, to set up this this other these two outlet and the area. So can we quickly do that, everybody, please? And then get to this point in just two minutes. What software does for you, basically, no software is, does design for you, but it's you that will design it. So drawing this thing, assigning this value is the design. That is the design. So it is when we finish, the software will model it and then give us the output of our model. Okay? By telling us this pipe is adequate, this pipe is inadequate. Like for instance now, if I come here now, I can right click on this catchment and change this area to 10. And then you find out that this pipe will overflow. Then that will tell me that 10, this pipe is inadequate for 10. So let's just continue. We we'll understand what I'm talking about. So now we've repeated the value for the catchment. The next value now is for the uh, manholes. And now right click on the manhole, double click the manholes. This is the name. This is the coordinates. This is the description. The description, you can write anything you want to write. You can write the manhole along Oshodi, or whatever, just to identify it. Okay. Okay. Then the inflow, no. The treatment, no. The elevation, why do you need the elevation? Because everything is flowing by gravity. So for the elevation now, for this one, I'm going to write 93. It's in your manual, page 14. 93 feet above sea level. Maximum depth, I'll leave it at four. Because I've already set it, I said all, our, all my manholes are four feet deep. Good. If you click down, you see is there a surcharge? Is there a pond area? All these ones, we leave them zero zero because we didn't. We're not designing. We're not allowing it to surcharge. We are not allowing it to pond. Okay. So enter. So elevation now is what ninety three. I'll press enter. Once you impute the value, you press enter. You close it. I'll go to J1, double click on J1. I'll place the elevation at 96, it's in your manual, 96. Because you need, the elevation is like the pressure at that point. J2, 90. You can see that the thing is falling down. That means it's flowing by gravity. 90, enter. J4. Common sense will tell you that J4 is 8, which means it's lower. Because if it's, if it's 100, it means, I mean, water cannot flow from 92 to 100. 
So it's, it's eight meters above sea level. You press enter. The maximum depth is still what it is because uh, we don't have any information about the surface. If I have any information on the surface and it happens that the surface is too deep, then I will know that the manhole will now be the size that will get to the surface. So this, this size I'm putting now is just, I'm assuming that this is a flat land. I'm assuming that this is a flat land. Then the outlets, the click on the outlets, look at it, the art four, sorry. I'll put it at 85. So take note. Eh? This is 93. This is 90. This is 96. You see, they're all in, all, in, all in all. This is 90. This is 88. And this is 85. So the water is flowing this way by gravity. The land is falling this way. Okay. So I have inputted the value for the for the junction. The next thing now is the conduit. Gentlemen, this is so self-explanatory. After drawing the sketch, the next thing you do is you now impute the parameters for each of the elements. For the catchment, we imputed two parameters. The catchment area where is empty and then the the, the impervious area, okay? Remember, if you don't believe the catchment, it, you, you fill in all these parameters. The slope, how slope is the land? I impute. How is the, left, the, the, the paved area? What is the degree of paving of the area? If you must know this, that it is not all the area that contributes to runoff. It is only the paved area that contributes to runoff. You should take note of that. It is only the paved area that contributes to runoff. So you can, you can either call it paved or you call it impervious. Good. Then the, the slope and everything, the width, what is the width of the catchment? The width by standard should not be more than 150 meters. Okay? okay yeah, it must be, we, we assume that water further than 150 meters will flow into another drain. So if I'm, doing, if I'm drawing my drain now, I don't expect water coming from two, two, 200 meters far to flow into my drain. It's not possible. Before it will get to 100 meters, it will, it will infiltrate, ideally, even if it's a very hilly place. So the limit is 150 meters. So take note. So, but because we are drawing in, in feet, 150 meters means 450 feet. So 400 is still within the limit. These are standards and it's in our manual. It's in our test, sorry. It's in our test. Or oh, I can mention, you can Google it. So now, so the conduit now, let's go to conduit. This conduit, I'm going to you know, click on the conduit now. How do you get the size of the conduit? That was what we did yesterday. And that reminds me, that was what we did yesterday. That's how you got the size of the conduit. So we have imputed. So the this one is three feet. Just double click the catchment, you put the parameter. Any of the any of the conduit that you double click, you put the, you, the, the values that you've gotten from your design. Then the next thing now is we're going to we have designed the we have imputed the variable for the catchment, for the manholes, for the links. The next one is the rain gauge. So we're going to the rain gauge now to design the rain gauge. That is where your IDF comes in, because this is now where you you, are, you, you now want to create a, an artificial cloud, an artificial rain that will be raining inside this model, and then we will now see whether our conduits, whether our pipes can accommodate the flow. So under rain gauge now, I'll go and double click on this rain gauge to edit it. So that is be on page 15, the last paragraph on page 15. The last paragraph on page 15. Page twenty. Okay, here's it. So page fifteen. So the rain format will be intensity or is it intensity? You know, just the format, the data is gonna come. It doesn't um it doesn't mean much. Look at it. The format will be density. The other format is there. It could be volume, it could be cumulative. But let's just read intensity. What is the time interval? You can leave it at one. 
what is the source of your data time series hmm? then the next one is what is series name so we don't have any series that way you see hashed hash there so we're going to create a, a time series so let us call that time series ts1 ts1 we don't know where ts1 is we'll just say ts1 they were going to create a ts1 now so now what we're going to do now is that we're going to um look at it this is ts1 we don't know what it is if you click further if you go further you see file name it, this one is data file which one do you, do you want to use time series or do you want to use data file it is a data file that contains the rain free form information you just upload it okay but the unit is in inches or in mm for now let's see if it's in inches because we're drawing in inches we're drawing in american units but if it's in uh, british units english units we'll use millimeter so So the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to create a, a time series. This time series that we put here, we're going, to, we're going to go down here or this way, come this way and go onto our time series. We're going to double click time series and then we click plus. Please follow me. Click on time series and then click on plus. Click on time series here right, on the project browser and then click on this plus sign to add one time series. So it will come up with a time series now. This time series will call it TS1 exactly as we did so that when this program wants to run, the rain, when the rainfall wants to rain, it will look for TS1 and then use the value that you imputed in it to run. So under field name, under time, you write zero. At time zero, the value of the rain should be zero. This is page 16. I'm on page 16 now, gentlemen and lady. I'm on page 16. So what I'm saying now is that when it has not started raining, Let's say at time zero, there's no rainfall. So the rainfall that has fallen is zero. That after one hour, the rainfall is now 0 0.5 inches. After two hours, the rainfall is now 1.0 inches. After three hours, the rain has started falling. It will be 0 0.75. That's started receding. Then after four hours, the rain is at 0 0.5 again. It's falling down. After five hours, the rain is at 0 0.25. Then at six hours, the rain has stopped. There's no more discharge, no more rain coming. Now, this is a six hour rain, but it can be 15 minutes, it can be any number of minutes. But if you look at here, you know that the critical time is, uh, is occurring around this second two hours. That's when the, the rain attained its highest precipitation. So, these are precipitation value. At what hour at this? So, this thing, if you go to any river basin or, for, for, or to federal Minister of water resources, they have this data. But you don't need to worry yourself. All you need to go do is to go to IDF curve. If you go to IDF curve, you start picking those values at one hour. But in this case, you have to pick it for five minutes. This is what we we'll discussed yesterday. At five minutes, what was the rain? At six minutes, what was the rain? At seven minutes, what was the rain? At 20 minutes, at 15 minutes, and then at 20 minutes. So that when you finish, your chart will look like this. This is how, how a typical rain looks like. Even though this, this is not a perfect rain, but a rain normally looks like a, an inverted trapezoidal. It normally look, looks like an inverted trapezoidal. Okay? Like an inverted trapezoidal. Inverted trapezoidal will uh, is a kind of um, uh, how do I describe it? Inver um, how do I draw it for us? Okay, if I want to get an inverted trapezoidal like this one, what I need to do now is just to name three one, hmm? and then you something like this. This is how the perfect rain looks like. The rain starts here. It peaks. Eh? Then it smoothens, it flattens, sorry, and then it comes down. When the rain falls, it gets to it peak. 
sustain that peak for a while and then it comes down. So close. So this is now our rain value. Gentlemen, I want you to understand what you have done so far. We have imputed value, I'll press okay. This I forget. So the rain, the rain now is charged. So if I go here now and uh, you see TS1, you see that TS1 has been activated. If I didn't put TS1 here now, for instance, eh? okay, there's no rain. So if I if I if I have created this time series, for instance, and do everything which I'm supposed to do, maybe I put here 1.25. Click OK. If I double click on the rain gauge, you see there's no time series. If I click on this, please, it will bring up TS1 for me because TS1 has been defined. It's like it's, it, is, it, needs, it needs a file to run with. So I'll create that file externally and then ask him to use that file called TS1 to run. So this is what we have here. So now, um, with this, I think the next thing we need to do now is to, we have, we have, we have created our range gauge, through the values, catchment, through the values, um, a manhole, we have imputed the values, our conduit, based on our design, our hand, hand, hand design, we have gotten the conduit uh, dimension, and we've imputed it, okay? Then, that means we are really, really, really good to go. So, the next thing we do now is to run our model and then save it. So here, what do I do? You come to this place to project, to see run simulation. Run simulation. I'll click on run simulation. It will run for it is successful. So can you click on run simulation on that project? Or you can come here, this icon here also means run. Look at this icon, it looks like fire. So, this is my running. It is successful and it has given me all the parameters that I need. It said that my flow routing is about 0.24% and my runoff is about 0 0.1. That is, these are like error. The error in this place and the error. So the error is very low. The error, if the error is more than 5%, it will give you unsuccessful. But for the error to be less than 1%, that's why I said the running is successful. That means those drains that I use are very adequate. So later on, we'll change some of the drain, the conduit pipes, and see what the what value to give us. Okay, I'll click OK. So let me save this file. The next thing we we'll do is to save it. So I'll click on save. Under save, I'll say save as. Mm -hmm. And I will save it as um, um, day two practical. Let me save it in a place that subsequently we can be using it. So save. Just move to save so I don't I don't lose it. Basically, that's why I'm saving it. So you can see we have designed our catchment albeit regular catchment, it might not be regular. You, you, If you import the map of the city, you just draw your catchment around the boundaries of the city. It might look funny, it might look anyhow. And then you draw them and then you draw the manholes where they're going to empty. You know, this thing can also be strict. This can be, I'm not build the way. This can be another street, this can be another street. And these are the pipes, the conduit that will go through the street. But the, the, the thing is that in a big city, you don't have to design the tertiary and the secondary lines. All you need to do is to design the mains and the primary. Because when the mains and the primaries are adequate, the other ones, the tributaries, will fall in line. Very important. I want you to look, take note of that. You must always design the mains to be adequate. In, in many city, in many water reticulation or, or stormwater design system, they don't go designing the pipe that pass through streets, that pass through houses, no. They will design the pipe that pass through the main road of the city pass through the perimeter of the city, those big pipes that they know that all the ones coming from the streets will still find their way into those ones. If those ones are not adequate, that is what is causing flooding. It's not the water that is falling inside the drain in front of your house that will cause flooding. No, flooding is caused by the one, the big one that is supposed to discharge it into a canal or to discharge it into an outfall or to charge it into a river. If that one is not adequate, and that is where the problem comes. So that one must be well designed 
and it must be designed well. And that's why if you are given a big city to design, you are not even key, you might not be, be so much disturbed as per um, what you're going to do. All you need to do is design the names and then you're good to go. So now, after that, we're going to view results. What have we designed? What, what have we gotten? So we have saved the file. Okay. So the first thing we do is um, you go to your report, type report. On that report, you say summary reports. Report. Or you go to status. Let's start with status reports. Status reports. So this is the report. This is what you're going to print and include in your mission sheet. Very important. So this is now my report. Let me increase it. So, so this is the summary of the report. So rainfall runoff, yes. Snow melt, I didn't define those ones. Flow, note. So these are like takeoff parameters. These are all the parameters I use. This is when they start, this is when they end. Now let's go. Total precipitation is about 3.5 depth inches. Evaporation losses is zero, didn't define it. Infiltration loss is indicated. Where, where, where did this one come from? It's coming from when we say only 25% is contributing to runoff. So that means the other ones are infiltrated. So there's also actually a volume for that. So this is the volume and this is the depth of feet. Remember. Then runoff, so so for instance, runoff is one point something. So if you add one something plus this one, it should be giving you that three point something or thereabout. Then final run storage, the storage is very low, 0 0.18. Contingency error is very, very low too. Then flow routing. Flow routing, the same thing. The external flow is there. The evaporation loss is indicated. Final stored volume is indicated. These are the time steps. So everything will be well indicated for you. This is one of your, this is your status report. So I'll close it. The next report is your summary report. Okay. This is your summary report here. So if there is a problem in any of these places, it will indicate. For instance, the runoff now, look at the runoff. Agege, total precipitation is 3.5. Total runoff, run, run on in, is here. Total evaporation is here. Total inflow, PPFS area. Everything will be given to you. If we go to uh, link, link flow, we see, look at the, the values that are flowing. So, so far there's no problem. I go to no depth. Look at the no depth. This is the average depth. Um, you can explain all these things as reported depth fit and everything. Then you go to the out for loading. It's good. This total load, total volume in gallon that are coming going through the outfall. So this is the total volume coming from the catchment. So all you need to do is that you you review all, all these results. Okay. And then you can copy them. You can copy it. You now go to MS Word, for instance, or Excel. So, sorry, I don't know why this is coming. Okay. So, so this is basically the computer application in C1. So why we did this simplify is because there's a manner for it. But what we did yesterday, you can just import it, the, the picture, and then you draw it. So this is basically the step-by-step -step approach in using uh, SWIM to design um, a stormwater um, system.